Well, young Tim, uh, we're going on an adventure, Uncle Randy, on this interview. We're going to go find some liquid gold in the land of the midnight sun. Liquid gold. And did you know that the pizza uh, that you're going to eat with that liquid yes. gold can be delivered by plane? Hmm. And that makes only good sense. <laughs> For me, anyway. How do you tip that? And this... This northern state, eh? Uh, you can get wake up calls at the hotels for the northern lights upon request. Right? Yeah. Anyway, sitting to my left is young Tim Bona, who is mush, a mush. feature <laughs> writer of many magnificent golf articles in our Lynx Libations magazine. And sitting to his right, myself, Randy Weckerly, and I have no idea what I do here other than <laughs> try to put this whole thing together. And you are joining us on Distilleries, Breweries, Wineries of the World. And we'll tell you what, we got a a big part of the world we're going to be going to today, young Tim. Huge. I was on a plane trip to Japan one time, and I was telling our guest earlier today, as we entered the uh, east side of the state, they said, you know, get a good look, and we'll tell you when we are going to leave. You'll have an hour. Oh, but in the meantime... It took an east, hour to fly over oh, the state. Oh, no, wait a minute. <laughs> an hour. They showed us a movie. They fed us food. They showed us another movie, fed us uh, a tree, then some sports, and then they had us pull up the thing. So uh, we are coming, are going to the great state of Alaska. And on the other end of this phone is Ryan, and maybe, maybe he left, Ryan <laughs> McKinster, and, uh, who is uh, one of the great advocates for the uh, Brewers of Alaska. Uh, good morning or afternoon, whatever time zone you're in this, uh, right now, Ryan. Uh, technically, it's still a um, morning for us. I okay. Alaska. There you go. Hey, Ryan, the geographic, as we were just describing, diversity, is a, it's a hallmark of the Alaska brewing landscape up there, but you are not stuck in the 80s. you got a lot of hearty people up there who are full of spirit and soul, and you're, you're, keeping them, you're getting them through those winters with some, uh, some beverages, aren't you? Uh, yeah, we are. I mean, yeah, as you guys mentioned, it's a huge state. Um, you could basically you could go from the Aleutian Islands to the, the east border. It would cover the whole United States. Um, it does make for an interesting um, effort when you're promoting a craft brew, especially when someone comes and calls and says, hey, I want to hit all the, as many brewers as possible in Alaska. How do I do that? <laughs> I, I recommend a plane and a boat and a car. <laughs> and, the, and the dog and the dog, dog mushing, <laughs> dog that's, sleds. That's pretty much the only way to do it. You know, we've got, we've got representation from down south, like uh, – Sitka and Juneau, all the way up to you know Fairbanks and North Pole. Um, right. Not elves making that uh, that great brew up <laughs> there, but I think we've got some really good uh, crafty people up there. Um, well. and as well as we've got a brewery and planning actually in Dutch Hopper, in Alaska, famous from you know um, yeah. deadliest catch. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> One of the things I found out is that uh, speaking of you know population, mm-hmm. we were talking about the moose of Montana yesterday or something yes. along those lines. If Manhattan had the same population density as Alaska, uh, there would be twenty eight people living in Manhattan. <laughs> <laughs> so, that sounds about right. Yeah, and that's some. Um, anyway, it takes a lot of energy and patience up there, doesn't it, to get the get the product out, Ryan? Uh, yeah, actually it does. It, I mean, the fact that you guys recognize that's important. A lot of people don't. Um, for, for my brewers, they've got to import almost everything. And we do have one great natural resource that we use in our product, and, you know, that's the great clean quality water we have in Alaska. Right. We're known for it, an abundance of. Um, so we are actually a value-added manufacturing uh, industry in Alaska. But, you know, just to do the economies of scale in our population, you know, a lot of stuff that we produce – we have to bring in from out of state. You know, even our cans come in from out of state. We do not have production of, of cans or bottles. Um, you know, kegs or barrels come from out of state. All the equipment, unless it's used, which is a benefit of the Brewers Guild. You know, my guys transfer uh, equipment between each other. But pretty much everything comes in from out of state. And then for a few of my breweries that actually sell um, – uh, back out of Alaska, you know, in the lower 48, such as anybody knows Alaskan Brewing, as well as Denali Brewing, Midnight Sun, and Baranoff Island Brewing, um, then they got to put everything on a boat and ship it back down. So it's a it's a little bit of a um, an effort, and it's a commitment from our guys, but they're willing to do it because they really believe in the product and they believe in Alaska. Well, a bunch of hardy souls. You have to be hardy to live up there. I, I was telling uh, Tim and actually Ryan today, we actually had built uh, synthetic golf courses and greens in Alaska, one of our other partners. Another fun fact we're going to go before we get some more information, and this is not a fun fact, it's a real mm-hmm. fact, that uh, when the Japanese invaded Alaska in World War II, more Americans were wounded or killed defending Alaska than Pearl Harbor. 
That's incredible. Can you imagine Didn't that? Didn't know that. I mean, it's a big state. All you. right, Ryan. So you've got some high traffic settings, Anchorage, Wasilla, Eagle River, but you've got some small, like Kodiak and Sitka, some smaller, almost self-contained markets, but it's still flourishing out in the rural areas. Yeah, that's true. And, and I think you make a couple of good points. At Kodiak, for example, um, our friend Ben out there at Kodiak Island Brewing, he's speaking of liquid sunshine. That's his famous beer that people just mm-hmm. can't get enough of in Alaska. Um, when we have, you know, beer festivals, everybody, first thing they do is they walk up and find me and say, hey, is Ben's <laughs> beer here? Is there is there liquid sunshine here? Um, just due to logistics, we don't always have it at our festivals, but a lot of times we will have someone representing um, him as well as our other breweries. And then, yeah, you, know, you mentioned Sitka. And, and the one unique thing we have is we've got a huge tourism um, industry as well. And if you're talking about the lower um, uh, Alaska, you know, southeast, uh, which is which is the panhandle for us, uh, if you want to kind of look at the image in your head, um, mm-hmm. that's only accessible by boat, pretty much your plane. Mm-hmm. So it's our marine highway system. Yeah, in Alaska, we have ferries that are considered part of our highway system. So um, fortunately, um, those uh, uh, breweries can thrive down there, not just because of local consumption, but, um, you know, we've got a huge uh, cruise ship traffic that comes through those ports. And when you drop 5,000 people off a cruise ship into one of those little communities, you know, a lot of them, they hit, they hit you know, fair enough, I mean, brewing first, and then they go find a, a food truck right outside. Absolutely. They're going to eat and enjoy local culture. Exactly. One of the things that the state of Alaska, uh, you know, it's so diverse when you take a look. I do have a map in front of me, Ryan, and I did uh, find out where Sitka was. Is is it a – can you travel from Alaska down the west side of Canada into the United States? I mean, is that connected, you know, land-based at this point in time? I mean – yeah, actually, um, it's, 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 it's a trek. Like, if you're looking at Sitka and most of the places in the Panhandle, um, south uh, uh, east Alaska, there is not really any way. You'll have to get on a boat or a ferry to get to a connecting road to get mm-hmm. down. Um, the Alaska, Mar- or Alaska, Trans-Alaska, Trans-Canada Highway um, um, can- basically starts up about kind of where the Panhandle stops, which is up towards uh, south-central Alaska, basically east of Anchorage. Um, so you have to get up there to get back on the road, or um, Haynes and Skagway, you get into Canada and then catch over and come down. Um, but yeah, it's I mean you're looking at four or five days travel at least, you know, and that's that's not a four hour travel day. That's a that's a yeah. you know that's a work day of travel each day just to get back to the lower 48. All right. Anything coming up on the legislative slide coming up that you're focused on, Ryan, up there in Alaska? Yeah, actually- yeah, actually, we've got a big issue. It's called SB 76. It's a Senate bill. Um, it's, a, it's a rewrite of our Title IV, which is our whole alcohol law as, as a whole. Um, over the years, as um, you know, business models change, brew pubs, for example, uh, the um, growing popularity of uh, breweries with tasting rooms, such as we have, um, over time, the laws had to be changed to, to accommodate that. And rather than create a system that really worked for new ideas, small, small little carve-outs were created. Um, which causes confusion for our enforcement officials, who we always work closely with, um, public safety, um, our, our friends in the um, um, public health and safety uh, arena as well, as some, some of the other stakeholders in the alcohol industry. And a lot of times we don't even know what the law said, even enforcement officials did. So the whole idea was to, to work together as a group and come up with a big rewrite of all of Title IV, as well as create a system that future business opportunities could be realized by making a small tweak um, mm-hmm. through permitting rather than writing a loophole outside of current statute. There you so, go. Well, Yeah, it's about a six-year process, um, um, and right now we're working on that. There's one little problem that you know we have in this bill that we are that, that it, we think is a detriment to craft, um, not just us, but distilling, fireries, and wineries as well, that would require us to have a certain amount of distribution outside of our tasting rooms. Well, um, if making beer from scratch wasn't so difficult at times, Ryan, it wouldn't be <laughs> worth it now, would it? It wouldn't be. So we're working on that, but um, I think we've got some positive movement on that. We hope to see this uh, pass this session to give everybody some, you know, right. breathing room and 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 allow our department our, that uh, enforces these alcohol laws to, to to move forward and have some more efficiencies. They are they are working uh, every day, and with some new additions of um, other legalization that happened in Alaska, they are swamped. And we want to make right. their job as easy as possible because, to be honest, um, I'm not sure about other states. They're good partners with us, and they work closely with us. They always work with us to get to compliance and yes rather than throw a, a violation at us. Right. Well, but, speaking of legislation, is it still illegal to give a moose a beer in Alaska, Ryan? 
I've that's still that illegal. So many times, and coming from <laughs> working legislation in, 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 in some of this in this government realm, I have still not been able to find that statute. <laughs> well, um, we have young Tim that comes up with these really great fun facts that your tourist board should really know things about, right? Yeah, and yeah. in, in my guess is that is probably in some very small community in their regulations somewhere that I have access to. But you never know; it could be Fairbanks. It sounds very Fairbanks. All right, All right. another right. another short fun fact. Uh, Pitbull, what was this here? Is that the famous musician Pitbull promoted energy drink? Have you heard about this, Ryan? Yeah, and I think you went. Did you go to Kodiak or Bethel? Yeah, he, yeah. He said most of the drink, uh, the drink, the most of a particular drink. Uh, anyway, he would visit that Walmart, and it came Sitka, Alaska. They, oh, they, okay, they one want. Sitka. I knew it was somewhere. Yeah, so it. Uh, I think we'd rather come up there and experience the clean air. The salmon fishing. You bet. You know, and uh, we look forward to working with you and getting the word out. I mean, it's great for us, entertaining. You know, we're just down here in the uh, in the lower end of the world, but you're up there in a great place where it's always an adventure. Well, they got everybody. a few golf courses up there, you know. Anchorage Golf Course, Moose, golf courses. Moose Run Golf Course. Yeah. Yep, Moose Run's great. Yeah, a couple, well, short season, but hey. Golfers golf, then they sip, young they Tim. Sip. Yes, they do. We'll be sending you our links in Libations Magazine there, uh, Ryan, and we look forward to having you on soon. Always come great, back. Great, I really appreciate it. Did great. We'll look forward yeah. to it. Anyway, that was Ryan McKinster of the Brewers of Alaska. And I'll tell you what, that's fun when you talk about Alaska. And in 1867, Russia sold Alaska to the United States for $7.2 million. Uh-huh. That works out to two cents an acre. It's, that's a lot. <laughs> that's a lot. I got a lot for you up there. I like to see you. Mush. Mush. Yeah, I can see. You know, you. what do you wear all year for, on your feet? I got flip-flops on, Dan. Got summer dogs here in Wisconsin. Anyway, thanks again, Tim. Thank you, Ryan. And uh, come back soon for our distilleries, breweries, wineries of the world. Talk to you soon.